Welcome to Sky Maiden Musings, created, directed, and presented by Rev. Dr. Dickie Joe Mullen. This video will highlight the Celtic zodiac, which embraces nature symbols. Irish heritage and Celtic culture. It has a special place in the hearts of all of us, and St. Patrick's Day is the day when everybody is Irish. I have a very good friend whose last name is Schmidt, and she always says she's Reverend O. Schmidt every St. Patrick's Day, and everybody smiles. And that's kind of what the gist of the Irish culture is all about. A very, very favorite joke is, a kind word will get you a long way, but a kind word and a shillelagh will get you a lot further. The Celtic Zodiac is a particular type of astrology that's rooted in the culture of Ireland and the other Celtic countries. Um, every day, every summer, at sunrise on the summer solstice, hundreds of people, those fortunate enough and not enough to obtain admission, will congregate in an open plain near Salisbury, England. Shivering in the pre-dawn, the huge crowd struggles to glimpse a small space among the circle of ancient rocks, Stonehenge. Stonehenge is one of a number of different zodiac circles, zodiac computers of earlier times that revolve around and honor this particular type of zodiac. The annual gatherings at the summer and winter solstices and also the autumnal and spring equinoxes um, show how we are all very drawn to understanding this ancient primal longing, perhaps affirming something about the continuity of life, the different cycles between the sun and the moon. The specifics of how the early Celtic zodiac worked are murky, lost in time. However, those who constructed the stone circles were precise and well-schooled concerning the celestial cycles. Various mystics, astrologers, and mythologists have, over the centuries, attempted to unravel the meaning, not only of Stonehenge, but of course the stone circles of Ireland, Britain, and other places in Europe. These monuments from bygone times usually would mark the longest and shortest of days. And in 1948, Robert Graves published The White Goddess, an immense scholarly work dedicated to this very topic. Graves gathered fragments of the early Celtic teachings and filled in the gaps with his own perceptions and conjecture. Is there a bit of blarney like the leprechauns we might find on St. Patrick's Day? Is there something valid about it? Does it tie in with the crest that represents the unity of honor, heart, and hands? The, um, the crest, which is a particular symbol, the Clara symbol um, of Ireland, actually ties in with some zodiacal influences. And of course, St. Patrick's Day, the beginning of spring, the renewal of the green, the appearance of the little people, the spirits of nature, all of them tie in um, with the part of the greater whole. Vaguely, um, zodiacs, the zodiac that Robert Graves developed um, might be a leprechaun's pot of gold, teasing us to follow a distant rainbow. But you can take an opportunity to explore it and decide for yourself. And I'll say top of the morning to you and the rest of the day to you is the right reply. Um, Politician Tip O'Neill, very famous, colorful Irish figure in the mid-20th century, would um, always insist that the reporters greet him that way in order to have a shot at the best interview of the day. Or so the story went. Maybe there was more to it than that. But we'll honor the Celtic Zodiac in a spiritual and esoteric sense of the seasons by looking at some of the advice that each of the birth signs might relate. It's a um, 
It's a tree and plant zodiac that graves developed with the Celtic year, beginning on December 24th with the birch tree. And this is a kind of a synopsis of his long and very complicated interpretation of the birth chart. And I think it enhances the debate, debate, intrigue, and enjoyment as to whether he dreamed it one night, whether the fey ones, the little people, gave it to him, or whether by visiting the stone circles and examining the early language of the trees um, left by the druids of ancient times, um, there's something to it. The birch tree is the sign from December 24th to January 20th. This follows the winter solstice, and it marks a time of deep winter. The graceful white tree, the birch tree, is fresh and cleansing, ruled by the sun, and symbolized by the eagle and the stag, sacred to the deities Carowin and Taliesin in Celtic times. It's a dream of journeys to the realms beyond, taken as nature slumbers. A birch tree might be dressed as a woman and welcomed as an honored guest in some early ceremonies. The message is one of high aspirations and reaching for the growing and brightening light to come as the days begin to lengthen. There are different ways to apply this in one's personal life. Uh, look at the Celtic sign that relates to your own birth date, but also the time of year. Living through the wheel or time of the year, our lives change as the weather changes, the length of the day changes, the rhythm of nature changes. It reflects what's going on with all of us. From January 21st through February the 17th, we have the Rowan Tree. This time relates to the planet Uranus. It's symbolized by the dragon. The goddess Brigantia is honored. She is a thinker, um, a magical catalyst who makes things happen. Philosophical transformations influencing the outcome of matters is the focus of this time of year. The Rowan tree is related especially to witchcraft, the old religion. The twigs of the tree are tied with red thread and hung in an entryway to offer protection to all who enter. The ash tree relates to the Celtic zodiac sign of February 18th through March 17th. We have the sea god Lur here, the planet Neptune, and the trident are the symbols of this benevolent influence. Shepherds' crooks, baby cradles, not shillelaghs so much, but hearth fires made of ash were all constructed to assure wellness and protection. Like a pure and translucent watercolor, the time of the ash relates to poetry, the final moments of reverie indoors before springtime begins. The message is one of self-renewal and healing. The alder, or the fern, is the tree that relates to March 18th through April 14th. Called ironwood, this is an exceptionally hard wood. It's been carved to fashion blades, implements, and arrowheads. Its emblem is the pentacle. Ruled by Mars, the elder is assigned to the god Bran and to King Arthur. It's argumentative and challenging. It's a trailblazer, efficient and confident energies, focusing on wasting neither time nor resources. The elder is a time to become active, with the spring equinox, it's time to move forward with the lengthening of the days and the planting season. The willow is April 15th through May 12th. The willow is ruled by the moon. It relates to the enchantress Morgan Le Fay, and it's symbolized by a serpent. Spanning May Day, a time of coming of age, um, the May festivals, the May Queen, greenery, birth and reproduction are the metaphors here. The willow, the weeping willow, relates of turning tears to joy and of tears of sorrow to tears of joy. It's time to heal regret, release losses. The mood is one of observant perception of truth. Discover the silver lining behind the gloom of the clouds with the willow tree. 
The Hawthorne is next, May 13th through June 9th. Vulcan, the craftsman, is said to be a ruler of this sign, symbolized by a beautifully rendered chalice. It's a time of the patron of arts and dwellings in a starry castle behind this north wind. The patron of arts gives wisdom to see beneath appearances to other dimensions of beauty. It's said that bathing the face and eyelids with morning dew gathered from a hawthorn leaf in early May, especially May 1st, will give the gift of beauty and an ability to see the wee folk. It's worth it to get through the Celtic Zodiac just to plan for May 1st because that particular legend um, really charms me. I, I feel a special draw toward that. Weaving a wreath of branches of the hawthorn tree is supposed to repel any unfriendly um, fairies, spirits, or ghosts. The oak tree, June 10th to July 7th, is very interesting in that its strength and endurance are the gifts here. Think of doors and furnishings made of oak still in use that have been um, that lasted a thousand years or more. The oak tree can grow to be large and honor the triumph of the continuity of life during this bright time of year, leaving a legacy, pouring a libation um, of wine over the roots to invoke the favor of the oak spirit the crusader, the spokesman. The symbol for this time of year is a golden wheel, ruled by Jupiter, the god Dagda. It's a sign of structure, roots, and ancestry. Next we have the holly. You might think of holly as a Christmas holiday or Yuletide holiday energy, but actually in the Celtic Zodiac, Graves gives it to July 8th through August 4th. Cheerful red berries, but sharp spines. This small tree was often planted around dwellings for decoration and to offer protection from intruders back in the days before there were home security systems. The earth, a flaming spear, the sun god Danu, Habondia, an abundance goddess, are all associated with this cycle. Generosity, kindness, gratitude for all that is plentiful, it's linked with the early celebration of Lamas, a festival harvest celebrated around August 1st. Next we have the hazel, August 7th through September 1st. The rainbow fish is a symbol of the hazel. It provides a clue about the sign's tie to water sources. Precious water, including rain, the source of life. The planet Mercury, the god Ogma, suggests a link with numbers, rules, and the value of analysis. Acquiring knowledge is the goal and discerning truth. The quest for discovery extends to a divination. Usually the hazel is cut into a Y-shaped wand and used um, as a divining stick to find wells and objects, buried treasures, knowledge, research, information are the message of the time of the hazel. Next we have the vine. Um, the symbol of the vine is sacred to September 2nd through September the 29th. The graceful swan, the planet Venus, Branwen and Guinevere are images sacred to this time, spanning the autumn equinox. Summer blends into autumn, bringing a sense of resurrection. Autumn colors are celebrated, dance and music. The reward of the harvest ahead is promised. A sense of equality and justice comes about. The vine can be used as a source of deciduous fruits, delectable grapes, they're all related to um, drinking, eating, and hospitality. This is the sign that relates to a structure that will be built to welcome in loved ones, baskets, other items that make life pleasant. All can be related to the vine. Ivy is next, September 30th to October 27th. The earliest house plant might have been the ivy. Think of an ivy-covered cottage. 
Ivy is related also to happiness and to hospitality. Ivy wood cups um, holding ale were often passed at a common table to welcome guests back before people were concerned about germs and so forth. Ivy grows in a spiral and it was traditionally added to wreaths because the spiral is thought to represent a ta attachment as well as fidelity. A transformative symbol, the butterfly, Persephone, visitors who are reborn after visiting the underworld. All of these are related to the message of ivy. The sign of the reed, October 28th to November 24th. This is an emphasis on the inscrutable, the sacred keeper. Stones, the influence of Pluto, Puel, Hecate, the goddess of the underworld and the crossroads are all associated. It's Halloween season. Reeds can be fashioned into pan pipes, musical instruments which speak to the dead, thatched roofs for shelter, and other useful items from flexible branches. The reed time, um, likewise, is flexible. It's a time for preparation and the uncertainty of what the winter ahead might bring. The elder tree is November 25th through December 22nd. The elder is a healer with a solitary nature. Elderberry wine, elderberry jelly, all can be fashioned from the leaves and berries. These also cure warts and charm away chills and other maladies. The planet is Saturn, the god Prideri and associations with the under, underworld underscore wisdom, self-sufficiency, the archetype of the wise old hermit, man or woman figure, arriving to impart important insights before suddenly moving on, can be seen with the elder. November and 25th through December 22nd, ends the Celtic Zodiac except for one important caveat, the nameless day, December 23rd. Whenever I speak about this, which I have, I've spoken to Celtic ethnic groups, Theosophical Society groups, I always ask anyone born on December 23rd to raise their hand. So if there's someone there with this birth date, I can soften the message. Because this day is a day out of time. It's the nameless day. It's a day that hovers between two worlds, and it's related to mistletoe. When the old Celtic New Year ends before the next one begins, it um, represents a void. It used to be a time to collect debts and settle old scores. Here's our shillelagh again. The faces of the sun and the moon, like comedy and tragedy masks, relate to this day. It's a dark day um, when the light twins are about to remove um, away the darkness. And it was once forbidden at that time to argue, and the presence of mistletoe, a symbol of peace, is here. We think of mistletoe as hinting at the custom of exchanging a kiss beneath it as a protector of passion. But mistletoe is a much more deep and mysterious plant than that. This might be the most intriguing of all the different signs in the Celtic zodiac. Mysterious and magical, since earliest times mistletoe has been collected as a bestower of health, even though it is um, actually a, um, a drain on the plant, that it's, um, it's sort of a vampire plant in that it sucks away the energy um, from the host plant. The tradition tells us that it has to be plucked without a blade, never allowed to touch the ground, and then hung high in the home around the time of the day of the mistletoe, tied with yarn or ribbon. Every year I go out on a mistletoe collecting mission, and I ask all of my friends to go with me. None of them ever will, but everyone always wants some mistletoe when I've come back. And they want to know how I climb up 
way up into the tree to get the mistletoe bundles. They grow as green circles way off the ground, and I won't ever share my secret. But I do offer for all of my clients that arrive for a reading to look at the new year ahead, a mistletoe talisman for protection and peace throughout the new year. And so as you explore your journey through the Celtic Zodiac, think of the growth cycle, the different plants and trees, how they relate to the world around us, and their special astrological and spiritual messages.